Good evening and welcome to the new Bugajski Hour. I am happy to be back in Pristina to examine important global and local developments that affect the lives of all Kosovars. And today I will be discussing important questions with a major diplomatic figure, with our guest on the Bugajski hot seat, Samuel Zbogar, head of the European Union office in Kosovo. But first, my political commentary on an important international topic is entitled Europe's New Immigrant Crisis. A crime wave involving violent sex attacks on women in Germany and other EU states has intensified anti-immigrant sentiments throughout Europe. Public reaction will contribute to constructing a fortress Europe to prevent any more waves of refugees from the Middle East and North Africa. Outrage over the attacks on EU citizens by a small minority of refugees is boosting Islamophobia and xenophobic nationalism. It will also deepen the splits between EU capitals on how to deal with mass refugee inflows, it will undermine the Schengen system of free movement, and it will contribute to fracturing Europe. After admitting over a million refugees during 2015, German Chancellor Angela Merkel now faces an increasingly pessimistic public. Anti-immigration campaigners have focused on the failure of the country's asylum policy. Germany's anti-immigrant Pegida movement is using the sex attacks as a propaganda tool to gain supporters. And established Islamic groups have voiced fears that the crimes of a few migrants may jeopardize the future of tens of thousands of peaceful people. Outside of Germany, political leaders in several states are calling for a ban on future migration. Some governments in Central Europe have asserted that the idea of a multicultural Europe is dead and that all borders should be better protected against refugees. Hungary's Prime Minister Viktor Orban, who has been most outspoken in the region, called for a complete halt to migration into Europe and the establishment of a new European defense line on Greece's northern borders with Macedonia and Bulgaria. Orban warned that the Schengen system of visa-free travel would collapse if outside borders were not controlled. And even the most liberal and tolerant states are taking precautions against the free movement of people. In the most glaring example, Sweden and Denmark tightened their border controls on the Oresund Bridge linking the two states in response to escalating political, economic and social pressures. Checkpoints, fences, and border patrols are springing up in other parts of Europe along the migrant trail. Austria is reinforcing its border with Germany. Italy is planning to introduce controls on its border with Slovenia. And Hungary is helping Macedonia to build a 10-foot high razor wire fence. This chain reaction of border closures and tighter migrant controls will undermine the Schengen system. In addition to the fear of escalating economic costs in accommodating migrants, there is growing concern about social safety and public order. 2016 promises to be a landmark year for the European project that could be closed to new migrants. It is time for the Bugajski hot seat with our special guest today, the head of the EU office in Kosovo, Samuel Zbogar. Samuel, thank you for joining me on the show. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We have a lot of ground to cover, but I want to begin with a sort of overview picture of Kosovo's relations with the European Union, because it may not be clear to a lot of people where things stand. Since you've been here uh, in the past few years, what would you say has been the progress that has been achieved by Kosovo? Um, how have relations developed and what are the upcoming targets? Mm. Uh, well, I think we've done a lot in the past four years. I've been here now almost four years. Um, and in the past four years, I think we, we came to uh, signing a stabilization association agreement. Mm -hmm. We started in 2012 um, and we, we signed it. Uh, it was ratified by Kosovo Assembly. Mm -hmm. um, it has been um, given approval by the European Parliament this week. 
um, and it's going to enter into force very soon. So we have the first contractual relations between the European Union and Kosovo. Really very important symbolic step, I would say, mm -hmm. for the relationship between Kosovo and uh, European Union. So that's, I think, important achievement. The second process that also started in 2012, and it's, um, uh, I expect, to be concluded this year, is visa liberalization process. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is the process that Kosovo citizens care the most um, and are eagerly expecting it. Right. I've been uh, traveling to Kosovo a lot and I heard it from students to kids to business people to normal people to from politicians, civil society, everybody wants visa realization process and mm -hmm. they, um, they find it um, even discriminatory uh, that they haven't uh, got it yet. Mm -hmm. um, I think we, we covered a lot of ground in the past four years and I expect that uh, this year will also come to a conclusion and the decisions will be taken with regard to uh, Kosovo being granted visa-free travel. So these are the two really important right. processes that are clum uh, that, that culminated are culminating now at the very uh, in, in this in, in these weeks. Then, of course, um, um, we have uh, we started facilitating the dialogue also in 2012. Um, this is an important process helping the Belgrade Pristina dialogue. B sorry, mean. Belgrade Pristina dialogue. Important process helping. Kosovo integrating uh, and normalizing, normalizing relations with, uh, with Serbia, normalizing mm -hmm. relations within Kosovo with Serbs, and also normalizing relations with the European Union. Mm -hmm. I think it did help, um, or it went in parallel with uh, Kosovo establishing uh, relations with the European Union, mm -hmm. leading to the um, stabilization and association agreement. Uh, so this is, I think, is the third process that, that we were involved. Mm -hmm. um, um, and we'll probably talk more about it later on, mm -hmm. uh, given different views in Kosovo uh, about the process. Um, otherwise, uh, we continue to have ULEX uh, in Kosovo, uh, in the downsized version now, mm -hmm. compared to a few years ago. Uh, it also went through, through the process. I think it, uh, uh, it was, um, it helped Kosovo a lot. Um, on one side, um, helping the police, customs, um, uh, with the monitoring, training, uh, bring them to the point that they are today when we uh, see a very professional police, a very mm -hmm. professionally customs functioning very independently. Um, on the judiciary element, uh, uh, it's of course uh, more sensitive and the progress also comes more slowly. Mm -hmm. There were some successes that ULEX had <coughs> there as well, um, but slowly we are more and more handing over responsibility to Kosovars and Kosovo institutions and that's how it should be, that Kosovo institutions take responsibility for, for the rule of law. Uh, and and um, uh, last, I, th I would mention um, important assistance that we are providing to Kosovo, uh, money-wise, mm -hmm. through the funds. Um, we are, as the European Union and uh, European Union member states, we are the largest donor, we are the largest investor, and mm -hmm. we are the largest trade partner for Kosovo. So we're quite an important partner of Kosovo. Um, we are investing 70 million, now EU institutions itself, investing 70 million of assistance a year mm -hmm. and more and more focusing really on the priority areas, um, especially the rule of law, economic development, agriculture, mm -hmm. uh, and so on. So I think that through these four years, um, we, we see progress. Um, of course, we always have to look ahead and, and how much we, more we, we should be doing. Uh, but I think we are, we are getting structures in place mm -hmm. um, uh, of of uh, institutionalized relationship between EU and, and Kosovo. Uh, Civilization Association Agreement establishes uh, committees where, the, where, um, uh, where issues are discussed, establishes committee uh, also for the regular political dialogue between uh, Kosovo and, and European Union. So um, I think, I, I think we, we, we achieved something in our relationship. Right. That's a very good uh, executive summary. L let's start with some of these issues that you covered. Let's leave SAA to a bit later, the membership mm -hmm. question, because that is a, a long process. But as you said, visa liberalization is, is a major issue here in Kosovo. Everybody I speak to is concerned about this, is, is uh, let's say, criticizes the European Union. 
Can you explain to our audience why has it taken so long? All the other West Balkan countries have such an agreement, such a regime with, with the European Union. Why has it taken Kosovo, of all countries, such a long time to, to achieve it? And we're not even sure whether they'll get it this year. So mm -hmm. can, you, can you sort of outline that? Well, first to look, to look back um, for the reasons why, uh, why, um, why uh, it was more complicated. Mm -hmm. um, all other countries of the Western Balkans got visualization 2008-2009. Um, uh, that was, um, at that time, Kosovo was not ready to enter this process. Well, Kosovo and the European Union also was not ready yet to get Kosovo in that process. There were other processes in Kosovo mm -hmm. at the time that we were all focusing on. Including independence. Uh, th yes, that's <laughs> what I mean, you know, the February <laughs> sure. of 2008 and later. Um, so, so that was the where visualization happened for the region. Mm -hmm. Kosovo came later on, came later on in the picture. Um, and, and there were uh, two uh, situations changed in, in two ways. Uh, first, um, situation in 2012 in the European Union is different than it was in 2008. Uh, when the other countries entered, there was no economic crisis yet mm -hmm. in Europe, and the mood and, uh, in, in the member states was very different mm -hmm. than uh, it, it was in 2012 mm -hmm. or even worse than it is today after the migration crisis. Mm -hmm. So that, that this is one objective change of realities um, uh, where Kosovo had no influence, but, mm -hmm. are, but are influencing, they are influencing uh, Kosovo path. Um, the second is the experience of uh, the European Union with visa liberalization um, of uh, the neighbors of Kosovo. Mm -hmm. After visas was lifted for the other countries, um, there was a lot of uh, asylum seekers overstay violation of the visa regime right. because visa regime is not meant for, it's just meant for travel, tourist travel it's, uh, or visits to the families, it's not meant for work. Uh, or even study for that. Can I jump in? Is it based on the same principle as in the United States? In other words, if you have high overstay rate, then the country is less qualified. In other words, you have to meet a certain target, yes. uh, minimum target in overstay. Yes, it's, it's, it's not so um, firm as in the United States. I mm -hmm. think there is like 3% overstay right. rate or something. Right. Um, uh, here we also look at migration and asylum seekers, mm -hmm. and that's one element that didn't help Kosovo. Uh, because last January we had this huge uh, exodus of people mm -hmm. um, and asylum seekers in Europe. Uh, but experience after we uh, uh, lifted visas with other countries was that many of people overstayed. Mm. Um, and uh, that's why we put in place, European Union put in place a provision that we can even reintroduce visas to other countries because that's the right. numbers yeah. were really, yeah. uh, really high. Mm -hmm. uh, but that, of course, made uh, member states more rigid when it comes to the new yeah. uh, newcomers. Right. And so Kosovo, again, not for its own fault, um, came into, um, uh, was confronted with this reality. So that, um, th that made the process longer. Uh, that, uh, that brought us more uh, conditions, more recommendations. There were like almost not 100 mm -hmm. benchmarks that we introduced for Kosovo in 2012, mm -hmm. um, or 95 benchmarks. Um, double of the other member states, but these are the reasons uh, of, the, of the other neighbors. So these are the reasons. Now, um, out of 95, Kosovo did 87 uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, recommendations, and in December we presented our final report um, where we said there are these eight recommendations left. Once they are done, the Commission will be able to recommend visa, uh, lifting of visas for mm -hmm. Kosovo. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that for Kosovars, the most important is the end goal, mm -hmm. uh, lifting of visa. Yeah. But we must not forget the road itself. The road in these four months um, that we passed together, how much we changed Kosovo uh, on, that, on that path. Uh, because we were asking everything from, uh, from data protection uh, to... Uh, uh, to judiciary to function better, mm -hmm. um, uh, to border controls, all, all the stuff that Kosovo is now doing better and mm -hmm. is better off now because we asked them to do through these benchmarks. So I would say that Kosovo changed uh, significantly through these four years uh, um, implementing benchmarks thanks to this process of visualization. So it's not only the end goal that is important. I think this 
is this, this, this road leading us there is as important. Isn't it there a potentially vicious circle that the longer this is denied uh, visa liberalization to Kosovars, the more people are likely to try and get into the EU illegally, as we saw with the refugee flows uh, last year, and hopefully we won't see again this year. And then th the more that get in illegally, the more uh, the EU looks again at whether Kosovars qualify to visa liberalization. Isn't there a little bit of a vicious circle here? Well, last year there was this huge um, outflow of Kosovars mm -hmm. uh, uh, over the at the beginning of the year mm -hmm. and and Kosovo government or Kosovo institutions handled it well and they really brought the numbers significantly down mm -hmm. um, and what we are saying is first we commend for the institutions how they dealt with the crisis mm -hmm. after and, and now they are keeping it uh, under control and, and we ask that they, 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 they need to continue keeping it under control I think this is precondition uh, you're right that if we would see another crisis, a migration crisis mm. out of Kosovo, of course that would damage uh, the visa process. Um, and that's also one of, of, their, of, of, the, uh, of the things that we'll continue to monitor, that they keep control of, of the migration. But mm -hmm. we, are, we are at the end now really, uh, we, we have these eight recommendations that are doable. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Kosovo government reported to us already uh, uh, last Friday, they, gave, they sent us an update. Um, now we will assess um, uh, what was done, if there is anything that is missing, mm. um, and, then, um, and then we hope we'll be able to, uh, to, to recommend. It's, it's not for us here, it's, it's sure. for a commission, um, Commissioner Avramopoulos, Commissioner for mm -hmm. Migration Issues, um, committed to come to Kosovo early, uh, early 2016, mm -hmm. to evaluate um, the situation. Um, and uh, he will come when we can assure that everything was actually achieved. So it could be within the next few months, you think, that the recommendation and the decision could be made within the next few months? That's, that's our hope, that's our expectation. Mm -hmm. um, of course, this is a recommendation done by Commission mm -hmm. uh, to the Member States that all that was Kosovo asked was done. Um, then Member States will discuss mm -hmm. and they eventually approve it together with the European Parliament. Uh, that's then uh, where the decision... Th there uh, isn't a ratification process in each parliament, is there? Uh, is it no. Just, it's just in the European parliament. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. yes, yes. Um, but, you know, just to... I really want to stress the importance of the road. Mm -hmm. For instance, one of these recommendations that we have, remaining recommendations, speaks also about building up a track record of corruption cases. Mm -hmm. It is in the interest of Kosovo and Kosovo citizens that they deal with the corruption seriously. Mm. And so, so, you know, if through visa process we are pushing for that, it's in the interest of Kosovo at the end of the day. Sure. I was going to come back to corruption uh, in, a, in a little while, but I wanted to go through the other points you made. The SAA process, the Stabilization Association Agreement, every country uh, that has made it into the European Union from this region had to go through that process. Uh, and even those that, like Serbia and Albania that are further ahead had to go through that before they got uh, invitation for accession uh, and then the negotiations or the talks over mm -hmm. the accession uh, agreement. Uh, how, what is it, I'm not even going to put a timetable on it because, because we can't, it's difficult, I know. But what is it specifically that Kosovo has to do? What areas does it really need to reform to focus on? I mean, you mentioned corruption. In addition to corruption, what else is lacking in this country for it to achieve the same level, let's say, as Serbia and Albania? Well, f first, it's a, uh, it's a process that, as you said mm -hmm. correctly, starts with the Stabilization Association Agreement. Uh, this is a process that was guaranteed only to the uh, countries and citizens of the Western Balkans. Mm -hmm. um, this final perspective of joining the European Union. And that process starts with signing stabilization. Uh, and so um, we uh, will have to wait that it enters into force, which, which should be in a, in a matter of weeks or, or, or two months. Mm -hmm. um, and then, then we have SAA, and then we have to implement Stabilization Association Agreement. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, and then, of course, you have next steps. Right. You know, the next steps it's like are a ladder. It's, it's yeah. like the ladder. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know, you have you apply for membership, and then there is a screening done, and mm -hmm. then it's then you become a candidate, and then you 
open negotiations and then mm -hmm. you actually open chapters. I mean, it's mm -hmm. more and more steps sure. um, since also the mood in the European Union is, is not so um, enthusiastic about the enlargement, but rather uh, member states want to have a thorough process um, and they want to have uh, new members ready when they, uh, when they enter. Mm -hmm. um, so which are the areas uh, that, that Kosovo needs to right. uh, focus? Um, these are all areas that are also in stabilization association agreement. Rule of law is the key, is the, mm -hmm. is, is the first one. Um, because also in negotiations, uh, European Union is putting uh, uh, first priority to the to the rule of law, and that's mm -hmm. why the first chapters that are open are chapters related to the rule of law. Mm -hmm. with, with, any, with every country now, these are the first two chapters that we open are, are these chapters. Um, so the rule of law, dealing with the corruption, organized crime, um, uh, th this is the priority. Mm -hmm. uh, now, um, here, I think in Kosovo, it's, it's still a, a lot a, a lot to be done. It's it's not only uh, that legislation has to be in place and, mm -hmm. and that it has to be clear. Um, you need really functioning, uh, independent and trained uh, judiciary. Uh, you, you need uh, uh, proactive police. Mm -hmm. um, you, you need the mood in the country to fight corruption. You, you, need, you, you need the willingness uh, of the political elite um, to really allow institutions to um, uh, to fight corruptions, mm -hmm. meaning empowering uh, judicial institutions um, that they that they are not afraid uh, to 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 deal with the cases um, uh, and they're not that they are not under political influence. During I think the, during the time that you've been here, Samuel, have things from your perspective got better or worse vis-a-vis -vis corruption? Have things deteriorated or have there been some improvements? Some some, let's say, uh, combating some elements of corruption? Well, f um, I don't think they were deteriorating, mm -hmm. um, but I don't think there was really some uh, huge improvement. Mm -hmm. um, the legislation is in place, and this legislation is, is, is very good. Also, mm -hmm. last year, there were four very important laws, uh, judicial laws, that were adopted. Um, uh, but about the whole mood and willingness, um, there is a lot of discussion um, uh, about fighting corruption, mm -hmm. uh, but we still, um, I think we still like to see the, the real signs, and in the progress report we are very open about it. Um, for instance, um, one of the issues that are also happening, um, or happened recently, is the whole appointments into the uh, independent institutions and the mm -hmm. board of public companies. Mm -hmm. um, that's where we've seen and we continue to see political appointments, mm. uh, even against uh, the law, mm. because law is very clear that in public companies you cannot appoint people who are linked to uh, political parties or who are politically active, sure. and yet we saw that. Uh, we saw a lot of nepotism um, uh, in these appointments, um, so this continues mm -hmm. uh, in spite mm -hmm. of has been critical in every progress report. Right. Um, so, the, you know, it's fighting corruption, uh, it's not something that, you know, you can do in a matter of month or a sure. year. Uh, it's, in, it's, it's, it's everywhere, it's in the European countries as well, mm -hmm. but we, we need to see the willingness and, uh, and the zero tolerance toward corruption. It's sort of delinking politics from business somehow, and that's, that's a complex process. It takes yes. a long time. But it starts at one point, um, and, and, and there are signs that mm -hmm. show that, that somebody is serious about it. So this is something that I think we'll, we'll continue to, to search for mm -hmm. uh, in, in Kosovo. Um, then the next uh, 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 bunch of reforms, of course, relate to uh, economic development. Mm -hmm. um, this, is, this is linked to the rule of law, because you... Um, you cannot expect foreign investors to come um, if they don't trust institutions and judiciary institutions, sure. if they don't trust that their problems, if they come to the problems, will be solved fast uh, and in a professional way and, and, uh, and, uh, and without the political influence mm -hmm. or any other influence. Um, so the economic development reforms, you know, to, to um, empower production, uh, there is... Um, there is um, Trade balance of Kosovo is disastrous. Mm. Um, I mean, around 10% of, of their 
uh, import is covered by export. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really a little more, but, but not much more. So it's a little, uh, it's a really bad, um, uh, bad situation in, in, in trade. So that mm -hmm. means there's not much production. That means that um, uh, there need to be activities to, to, to um, prioritize production mm -hmm. uh, in Kosovo, and especially with Stabilization Association Agreement, uh, which opens a lot of new possibilities uh, for, for Kosovo companies, but at the same time, uh, <coughs> over, over time, when we open, well, Kosovo will open market toward the European Union, um, uh, also more competition will come. Mm -hmm. So it will be even more difficult to compete here at home. Mm. Um, so this is one of the priorities where we would need uh, reform, to, you know, to, to generate uh, uh, growth, to generate uh, employment. Right. How much investment is there from the European Union at present? What, what percentage of the GDP is generated by European Union investment? I wouldn't have that, uh, I wouldn't have that uh, it's uh, data. It's very low. Yeah. It's very low and it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's falling. Mm. Um, we see even investors withdrawing uh, mm. because of, 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 of difficult situations here. Mm -hmm. Investors um, and European investors who are now uh, gathered in European Investor Council, right. um, they have a lot of problems and, and, and issues that they're bringing to us as well as, mm -hmm. a, uh, as a problem, which, which are not encouraging. Sure. Uh, also not for um, uh, new investors who want to come mm -hmm. and then they speak uh, and they hear about bad experiences. Um, you know, about arbitrary decisions, about non-functioning judiciary, about uh, bad implementation of the laws or mm -hmm. non-implementation of the laws and, and things like that. Uh, we have, I think we have good uh, dialogue with the government on that and we are preparing a dialogue, another meeting of investors with, uh, with the government where we can discuss this, these issues. Mm -hmm. um, but th this is, so this is an area, you know, the whole economic development right. um, uh, where, where a lot of reforms uh, uh, will be needed. Um, I, I think these are the two, two main two areas, main, I yeah. think, when the, where the reforms. Of course, then we can talk about public administration reform. You know, you need professional public administration. Sure. Uh, not that it changes with every government, but that, you know, that you build uh, professionals who right. can support and politicians uh, who are at the top of the chain. Well, one major question which sort of overarches these issues is, is the question of political stability. And I know from working years in Albania how before Albania received candidate status, one of the EU uh, stipulations was um, functioning parliament. In other words, that, that there's political dialogue in passing legislation, which is extremely important. We've seen in Kosovo over the past few months uh, increasingly, I'd say, polarized political space. We've seen the protests in parliament. We've seen protests in the streets. Is this a danger that, that Kosovo could be derailed, its political stability and progress derailed as a result of this pol uh, polarization and poten potential radicalism? I think this is a question for political, uh, for political leaders and that's what they, were sh they should be worried about and concerned about. Mm -hmm. uh, we are concerned uh, with the situation um, because since it's, it's been now 19 months since elections were held in mm -hmm. Kosovo. Right. And out of which I think, uh, I don't know, like 10, 11 months were um, a kind of a crisis. For mm -hmm. six months when they, they didn't form the government. Right. Um, and in, I, I saw a data that in that half a year alone, Kosovo GDP dropped for 1.3% okay. because of non-activities right. of the government and institutions. Um, and now we, we are what we have four months of this stalemate mm -hmm. uh, when of course the government is functioning and the assembly is also passing laws but it's not really the way um, uh, the way one would hope mm -hmm. uh, you know when you have opposition inside when the real debates are going on right. in the parliament uh, so this is the concern especially when we see that the violence is increasing uh, from the assembly went out on the streets we saw the last demonstrations on the 9th of uh, January that the violence also can get out of control. Um, and we are concerned with this possible spiral of violence, you know, where, where this is uh, going. Um, and we really hope that, that the two sides, if you want, I mean, that the government and the opposition uh, leaders um, would find a way to sit around the table and, and, and engage in political dialogue. Mm -hmm. um, it, is, it is funny when you talk to one or the other 
side that opposition is saying that because they were not listened uh, in the parliament, because they were not consulted, mm -hmm. because they were not involved, um, that then they had, when they were offering the dialogue, you mm -hmm. know, um, they, they were not responded. Right. And, and now then they use tear gas and now they're, they're rejecting uh, the dialogue. Uh, the government on the other side, you know, at, at that time was not really um, uh, engaging in the dialogue with the position, but now when the position is not ready, they are ready to have mm -hmm. a dialogue. So somehow they will have to find uh, the time when both of them are ready for the dialogue. And I think now this, this is the time because of the, the damage that has been done to, uh, to Kosovo. And mm -hmm. it is being done damage uh, with, with the pictures um, uh, um, that are going around uh, affecting international image of Kosovo mm -hmm. and perception of Kosovo. Uh, because nothing serious can be done. Um, so I, I, I think I would hope that instead of you know, fighting with, with tear gas, they would fight with ideas how mm -hmm. to move Kosovo forward. Um, you know, they will not, that they will not throw uh, bottles at each other, but they will throw uh, proposals um, uh, of economic development at mm -hmm. each other. Mm -hmm. um, so opposition is, is, is now raising, you know, uh, is pointing to the problems that are problems in Kosovo, the rule of law, corruption, economic development. But at the same time, I haven't heard really any alternative proposal how they would do different, different and why would they be better uh, than the government. So I, would, I yeah. would just think that they should both sit around the table in the interest of Kosovo mm -hmm. uh, without preconditions and, and, and trying to find a way after the situation so that uh, both sides then uh, feel comfortable, that they find a zero-sum solution um, and, and that they can move forward. S several, I mean, there are several reasons the opposition say they're protesting. I think it's been triggered by this uh, agreement with Serbia, which, which we can come to in, in a moment. But one of the other questions has been the corruption issue. And when I talk to members of the opposition, they say, well, ULEX hasn't really fulfilled its role because it hasn't helped to reform our justice system so that people that are corrupt, officials that are corrupt, are engaged in some sort of uh, organized criminal ventures, come to trial and are held accountable for their misdeeds. How would you respond to that? You mentioned ULEX at the beginning. To what degree has ULEX helped Kosovo build a credible rule of law system, harmonize more with the European Union? procedures? Probably, um, unfortunately, there was um, uh, an unrealistic expectation uh, what the ULEX would do. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that when ULEX comes that, you know, they will get rid of the corruption and mm -hmm. corrupt people and everything, everything will be fine and, and beautiful. Um, it might be that we encourage that perception. Um, because somebody thought about catching big fish mm -hmm. um, and that sticked into the public's mind and now they're disappointed because they believe that uh, that not, not enough was done. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot was done. A lot of trials are ongoing um, uh, from, from on, on corruption case. I think the, the prisoner and mayor trial is, is now ongoing mm -hmm. on, uh, on organized crime. This uh, crime is Kalmendi case is now ongoing. Um, and, and there are many other cases, but of course, uh, you can only prosecute if you have evidence, if you have witnesses, mm -hmm. uh, if witnesses come forward, if documents come forward, um, and that's far that that far that one can go in, in prosecution. If mm -hmm. you don't have that, then you then you concentrate on, on what you have. Yeah. So. Um, <coughs> But the lesson I think learned is that, uh, of course, that never internationals can, can do complete justice. Mm -hmm. Internationals can come to the justice at the beginning, help to put justice on, on their feet at the beginning, but then uh, they have to continue training, monitoring, advising. And that's, I think, the role that ULEC should, should, uh, should see in the future, mm -hmm. that uh, more and more Kosovo uh, prosecutors, judges take responsibility uh, and ownership, and we are more in the uh, advising, advising role there. Sure. Even countries within the European Union, I know from the Romanian, Bulgaria, two examples, they've had problems themselves in 
uh, reforming the justice system. It's one of the slowest and uh, most difficult, most complex uh, sectors, I would say, of, of social um, interaction that has to be reformed, or one of the institutions. Would, would you say that Kosovo is on track in the same way as the other countries are? Yes, I think, I think Kosovo is on track. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we, we have good, good, good results. I mean, mm -hmm. we are encouraged uh, by the election of the uh, chief state prosecutor mm -hmm. and the way how he started handling and prioritizing uh, cases, um, encouraging and uh, monitoring also prosecutors um, uh, what do they do, how they do, um, and uh, whether they really follow up on the cases. Um, the two uh, local judges for constitutional court were also mm -hmm. elected um, uh, uh, at the end of last year. Um, so, so we see that um, the things can be, can be moved and are moving, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's encouraging. Um, so we need to just continue doing it. And, through visa liberalization process and other processes, we can encourage Kosovo to, to do it faster. In that sense, these processes are, are helpful. A another legal question in which the EU has been involved with is the creation of this uh, special court, which I gather recently the Hague has accepted uh, to host uh, the procedures, the investigations, the, the, the trials if they come and so forth. Um, how important would you say is this initiative for Kosovo? Um, well, we've been saying now for, for some time that, that it is important to get rid of this black cloud that hangs, uh, has been hanging above Kosovo since Marty came out with the report mm -hmm. uh, um, a few years ago. Um, I think it's important that, that through this court that the European Union um, uh, uh, is ready to uh, finance, um, which is Kosovo court, Mm -hmm. located in, uh, also in the Netherlands that the uh, EU will finance. Um, I think it's important that through this court uh, we clarify this, these horrible accusations that are in the report. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, this is important for Kosovo because as long as this is not, uh, uh, as long as this is not done, uh, it, will, uh, it will always come back to Kosovo. Everybody mm -hmm. who wants to say something bad about Kosovo mm -hmm. can just bring that out. Whenever you Google Kosovo, you will get that out. So for that reason, I think it's important that that is clarified sure. and we move on. Sure. Um, so we are, we, are, we are happy that we came to the point when Netherlands and, and, and Kosovo agreed on the terms of this agreement, bilateral agreement mm -hmm. on the host, uh, host state um, agreement. Um, and um, so we are looking forward to, to finalizing these procedures mm -hmm. um, so that the, the, the agreement enters into force and this will then enable the court to start functioning. Will it just be uh, former members of the Kosovo Liberation Army or will, it, will the investigations also look at the former Serbian security forces that were engaged in atrocities here in Kosovo? In other words, what is the, what is the mandate of the court? Does it simply focus on the Albanian side or does it look at the Serbian side? This is for prosecutor, chief prosecutor, to, um, to really answer these questions. I think it's, um, uh, it will focus on allegations that are in uh, Marti report. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's not, it's not limited to mm -hmm. neither to a group, nor mm -hmm. neither to ethnicity. Okay. And it's really up to him what evidences he gets, what evidence, what witnesses he has, mm -hmm. and then to uh, uh, to uh, to come forward with the with the indictment. Because as you know, there's some fears here that the the aim or the uh, let's say um, unintended consequence may be to try and delegitimize the KLA like any guerrilla movement, some members uh, were engaged in atrocities, as, as we saw even in Nazi-occupied Europe, some of the resistance movements were. Uh, but, but, but how would you respond to that? Um, I, I, uh, we, we had these discussions uh, with uh, members of the parliament uh, when we, we, were, we were trying to uh, convince them that this is something that is uh, good uh, for Kosovo. Mm -hmm. um, this, is, this is not um, a trial about the uh, uh, KLA. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, has nothing to do with KLA. This is uh, 
the indictment and the trial will be, a, will be about people who might be or might not be, mm -hmm. of course still needs to prove that, mm -hmm. engaged in some uh, horrible wrongdoings. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was saying uh, that um, once this is clarified, and I think it, it's, it is in the interest of Kosovo to clarify, because of the size of the magnitude of the accusations, mm -hmm. um, uh, after this is done, not after this is done, I think uh, uh, throughout uh, During the Kosovo, of it, yeah. through mm -hmm. Kosovo will have, or, or Kosovo will have even more right to ask that all crimes done in the conflict mm -hmm. uh, be clarified. Mm -hmm. I, I heard myself uh, a lot of stories um, when I was in Jakova about the crimes there, mm -hmm. about um, other places. Um, and, and of course this all has to be investigated. Uh, uh, and, uh, and tried, and, and uh, uh, clarity has to be uh, brought to those crimes as well. Right. Um, and I think that now Kosovo deciding to go ahead uh, with, with this report, um, they have even more right uh, to, uh, to ask for that. Sure. And another question that you, or another issue that you raised at the beginning, which is the agreement, uh, Belgrade-Serbia agreement, about which there's been uh, sorry, the belgrade pristina agreement about which there has been protests from the opposition here in Kosovo. The EU has played quite a significant role, I think, in bringing the two sides together. Um, where does it stand now in, 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 in the sense that there is protest here against that agreement on the municipalities, on establishing the Zajednica? How would you respond to that in terms of the progress that we can envisage from now on? Well, um, opposition claim that this is one of the reasons. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was probably maybe one of the trigger um, mm -hmm. after the August, but I see uh, now for quite some time that this is not the real reason uh, for uh, opposition um, um, mm -hmm. opposing uh, the normal functioning of assembly or uh, bringing people uh, on the streets. I think it went beyond that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, as we hear today, it's about having elections and having a new a new government. Yeah. Um, but um, this was the trigger, mm -hmm. in fact, together with the agreement uh, on Montenegro. Um, president sent it to the court, constitutional court. Mm -hmm. Court came back and, and they uh, established that in few elements, um, uh, principles might not be completely in spirit with, uh, uh, with the constitutions. Right. And uh, so when drafting the statute, now one will have to be very careful mm -hmm. uh, and will have to follow the guidance of the Constitutional Court in drafting the statute. But at the same time, the, the, the court did say that, um, uh, uh, that the, the, the Constitution allows for the establishment of this association. Mm -hmm. Just it has to be followed. It, they have to follow uh, the, the guidelines. Right. Uh, so I think that's what we are now looking that the drafting of the statute will need to uh, will need to start uh, um, and of course being very careful in, in following the uh, the guidance that constitutional court uh, presented but mm -hmm. you know when we are looking at this association uh, we again see we are see fear on both sides um, Serbs feel they need this association to feel more comfortable uh, in Kosovo in order to integrate um, as Otherwise, they feel uncomfortable as a minority um, that they could protect their rights and education, health, and, and way of life or mm -hmm. culture. Um, on the other side, now we see uh, also fear of, of Kosovars that this association will turn into something that was not envisaged, that it will um, turn to simplify into Republika Srpska, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, that it will block Kosovo. Uh, uh, in, in all the processes. Uh, so you have fear on both sides. What sure. you don't have is that each of the side will try to listen to the other side and try to understand why is the other side uh, afraid. Mm -hmm. um, and I think if, if both sides will try to understand the other one, we might come then to the solution so that uh, the, the, draft, the, the, the statute in the end will be the one that will uh, strengthen the community of Serbs at the, at the same time that will unite Kosovo and, and bring every, everybody uh, in Kosovo. It's, I mean, it's mm -hmm. 
optimistically said, but I yeah. think that's what we should aim because um, we, we see this fear on both sides and, and simply they will need to talk and, and try to listen what the other side, why is the other side concern. In addition to government opposition dialogue from what you're saying, should, be, should there be a dialogue between opposition and leaders of the Serb community in Kosovo? Yes, yes, for sure. I think there, 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 there is a need for an internal dialogue in Kosovo uh, uh, between uh, Serbs and, and, uh, and Albanians, mm -hmm. if you want. Um, but specifically some of the opposition uh, leadership, because they're the ones that oppose this agreement most vehemently. Yes. Um, at the moment, of course, uh, we don't see that that is possible given the position, but mm -hmm. that would be very much needed because it might then um, uh, dissolve some of the fears uh, or misperceptions about this association. Right. But you don't think, obviously, the European Union doesn't think that this would engender a Bosnia-type situation, no. thre threaten territorial integrity of Kosovo? No, we, we don't see association in, in that sense. No. L let me go on to another question that you raised again at the beginning uh, in terms of the long process of membership, the ladder that Kosovo has now stepped on. Will this process be hindered by the fact that five European Union countries do not recognize Kosovo as, a, as an independent state, as a sovereign country? Uh, in other words, you know the five, Greece, Romania, Slovakia, yeah. Cyprus and Spain. Does that need to be resolved before Kosovo makes further progress on this ladder? This is an issue, this is a problem, mm -hmm. yes. Um, and and uh, we will have to go step by step. Uh, I don't think that now we can speak about the final uh, destination um, precisely because of the, of the issue that five member states, five member states didn't recognize. Mm -hmm. um, and this has been the problem for Kosovo, uh, and, but so far we found a way how to move ahead um, without confronting that issue. Mm -hmm. So on visa we are going ahead, on SAA also we sign, we are going ahead. So I think we'll need to find solutions as we go along the way. And we also hope, no expect, not hope, mm. we expect that as we go, um, this dialogue between Serbia and Kosovo will also bring to the real normalization between uh, between Kosovo and Serbia. Uh, and, and that would then probably help uh, also uh, um, Kosovo process uh, uh, with the European Union. Presumably you don't want Serbia to enter the European Union before Kosovo because then you'll have six countries not recognizing Kosovo. <laughs> I mean, is there going to be a, a sort of parallel entry process that's envisaged by the European Union? I, I don't think we've been speaking about that yet. We've mm -hmm. been discussing internally a lot uh, about it. Um, we did have, we do have in, in several conclusion sentences that neither of the country uh, should block the other one on its European process. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and I'm sure that as we go along, as the dialogue progresses, as, as Serbian integration uh, with European uh, negotiations with the European Union go forward, mm -hmm. um, that this issue will also, uh, will need to be m more clarified how, how we'll deal with this, with this issue of non-recognition between Serbia and Kosovo. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you, because we, we have a little bit of time, just a couple of last questions. In terms of uh, the United States, as you know, the Kosovars are very much interested in U.S. policy towards the region. Um, how do you see relations now between EU and U.S. under this administration, under the Barack, uh, Barack Obama administration? Would you say there is uh, th there's very close coordination of policy? Uh, has the U.S. given more of the, let's say, um, initiative to the European Union because of the membership, potential SAA membership question and so forth? Where, does, where do things stand? Um, I think we have very close cooperation uh, mm -hmm. and coordination with the United States. Of course, you know, the United States have a special role in Kosovo mm -hmm. and special respect um, uh, toward the United States. Um, and I, I can say that on all issues, we really uh, work um, hand in hand. Mm -hmm. we, have, uh, we have eye on eye on all issues, uh, on all priorities and all goals. Mm -hmm. Goal uh, for both of us is a European Kosovo uh, mm -hmm. that can provide a decent and prosperous home uh, for their citizens. And we have the same priorities from the rule of law, economic development, normalization of relations. Mm -hmm. um, so 
I think we are very happy with the way how we partner with, with the United States on these issues. We, um, we always have support uh, for, the, for the dialogue, for the European processes. Mm -hmm. um, um, and, and given the special role that the United States enjoys in, uh, in Kosovo, they are helping us a lot also sometimes when we need to cross certain hurdles mm. um, um, in, in Kosovo. Kosovo is there something uh, is important for Kosovo. You know, given that what the United States did for Kosovo, mm -hmm. um, and you, including that you recognize them, um, and given that we are status neutral, um, it's, I think it's good partnership when we have the future of Kosovo um, while um, you have uh, the trust, uh, maybe more trust uh, of people. So I would, I would just say that it, it, it works really great, uh, the partnership that we have. This is good, good to know. L let me ask you a very large question, a very last question. Um, your country, Slovenia, a, a great success story, member, member of both EU and NATO, with the first from the former Yugoslavia. Despite the financial crisis that uh, recently experienced, Slovenia seems to be coming out of this uh, and is developing again its economy. What would you say are the lessons for Kosovo? How would you compare Slovenia with, with Kosovo? In terms of, I mean, size and population-wise, it's, it's comparable. comparable. But uh, in terms of its development, in terms of its potential, why are there, why are there such big differences between the two? Uh, well, I, I think the difference starts already uh, before uh, mm -hmm. in Yugoslavia there was a big difference in, in the level of development uh, between uh, Slovenia and, and mm -hmm. Kosovo and, and Slovenia was much more industrialized and that helped um, after independence mm -hmm. um, uh, it, it helped uh, move forward uh, the uh, you know the budget of Slovenia the size is the same no, mm -hmm. the size Slovenia is bigger but the population is the same more mm -hmm. or less um, but the, the budget of Kosovo is 1.5 billion and the budget of uh, government in, in Slovenia is 10 billion. So mm -hmm. you, you see the difference how much money sure. the government in Slovenia has to, to do things for their people and, and how little money there is in Kosovo to, to really take care of the public education, of the health system, of, of infrastructure, of development and, and, and everything. And we see that, mm -hmm. that's seen. Of course, internationals and donors can help but cannot substitute for, for, uh, uh, for the development. Uh, I think that's, that's the big difference. The starting point was really very different. And on top of that, um, uh, Kosovo, we, we came out in 91, while Kosovo went through, through internal conflicts and then the real conflict in, sure. in, uh, at the end of 90s. And, and also after that, the whole issue with the independence um, uh, um, non-recognition, I think this mm -hmm. is burdening a lot and continues to burden the development of Kosovo. But you're optimistic, I presume, for the future. No, I'm optimistic, mm -hmm. seeing what we did in four years, what Kosovo did in four years, in the relations with us, it does, even though they want to <coughs> be much faster, but you know, if one looked in four years what was done, one can be optimistic for the future. And mm -hmm. you know, y y one asset that Kosovo has uh, is a great uh, population, great young population, mm -hmm. the great number of young people excited and energized. Mm -hmm. and, and if only Kosovo could use these people um, uh, for, for, uh, for, for, for its development, faster development. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's the challenge and that's the solution for Absolutely. Kosovo. On that note, thank you for joining me on the show. Good luck in your important work on behalf of Kosovo, but also on behalf of the European Union. And uh, I'm sure we'll meet up again either here or in Washington. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was great having you. Having me. Unfortunately, we have already come to the end of today's show. Uh, I have, as always, greatly enjoyed being with you and my colleagues here at RTK. Good night, everyone. Stay healthy, be productive, and remain optimistic. See you all very soon. Miro Pavshin. Thank you.